read from this morning. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the lake in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has been gone. From time to time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them, immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. <coughs> Jesus went through Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. Tossed into jail. 
Now, Capernaum is a bigger town than Nazareth. It's in Galilee, a fertile region that can support a lot of people per acre. Galilee is on major trade routes, one running north-south between Damascus and Egypt, the other one running east to Persia and all the riches of the east. Galilee is a part of the world that has been conquered plenty of times. There, so there are all sorts of different kinds of people living there, far more than Judea, where Jerusalem is. There was a saying back then that said, Judea is on the way to nowhere. Galilee is on the way to everywhere. Galilee is a place that is open to new ideas. So if I were trying to get people to turn around, to repent, if I were trying to find a place to start, Galilee would be that place. It would be a great place to get some momentum going. Or Galilee is a place of prophecy where hundreds of years before God said that the light would break through the darkness. Either way, it's a good place to start a ministry. But if I were Jesus and I were looking for disciples, I would go down to the Nazarene's Carpenters Guild. And I would say, hey, called by God. Looking for disciples. Okay. Follow me. And we will build together the kingdom of God. Because these are people I know. They speak my language. If I don't already know who's willing to put in the work, I know I can figure it out. Because at the beginning, that's what you need. Building momentum is really hard. So getting that wheel spinning initially takes a ton of work. And you need the right people to be able to go through all the challenges and frustrations of getting that work done. In the tech startups that I worked in before ministry, that initial team was key. You needed one or two people who were technically brilliant, and you just worked around their personalities. But mostly you needed people who could work well together with others and weren't too proud to do any job that needed doing. But just like in Jesus' baptism, Watch what he does, because he makes it look so easy, and it's not easy, but we can do it, because it relies on discipline, which is what makes a disciple a disciple. Jesus does not go to the carpenters to build the kingdom of God. Jesus goes to the fishermen. Now, we know he got four of them to follow him, but who knows how many he asked. How many times he met with blank stares or curses as he walked along the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus goes to the fishermen. He invites them to fish for men. We lose that play on words when we say fish for people. They are fishermen who fish for men. I think that play on words matters because it catches their ears. Jesus must have been listening to them and learning their language. He must have been listening to their stories there on the Sea of Galilee. He must have realized that no one knows how to sit in darkness like a fisherman. He must have realized that no one knows what it is like to have worked a whole day and caught nothing. He must have realized that on those days when you caught nothing, that was the shadow of the valley of death. Because they were men who earned enough with a little bit left over, but not enough that a day without fish wasn't dangerous. Jesus must have realized that those men knew what it was like to throw the net over one last time and haul up 153 fish and have the net not even be broken. This is a story that was told in John. And they must have known what it was like to move from the shadow of death into the dawning light. 
Jesus goes to the fishermen and knowing and speaking their language and knowing that he can show that he understands that they already know about the coming of the kingdom of God. They just might not know it yet. He asks them to follow him because they know about the darkness and about the coming of the light. They know about the shadow of death. And everything else he can teach them. For Matthew, teaching comes before everything, before preaching and healing. Teaching is Jesus' great gift and his ability to stay focused on the goal, turning in a new direction in order to meet the coming of the kingdom of God. Jesus doesn't focus on the process. He doesn't focus on building a team and building momentum. Jesus is focused on the kingdom of God and how it is breaking into this world. And who sees that? Even if they don't realize that's what they're seeing. Jesus isn't in a circle and putting the ones he knows on the inside. Galilee, the, the word for the place, that word means circle. Galilee means circle. Because they were encircled by Gentiles. And in that circle place, Jesus stops drawing circles. Jesus says just anyone, everyone, can repent and change direction. Because they already know about the coming of the kingdom of God. Once we speak their language, we don't need to explain about the kingdom. There is no way that your grandson missed that the kingdom of God was there when a nine-foot Tyrannosaurus Rex showed up on the front lawn. He knew perfectly well what he was looking at. Once we speak their language, they are telling us they know what it means to sit in darkness and have a light break in. They already know about the shadow of death and the dawn. We just need the discipline, the teaching, to help them realize that there are so many people already turned around and working towards the coming of the kingdom. They come to the church on a snowy Friday to make 90, how many did we decide ultimately? 90-ish? Yeah, Ninety-ish no. <laughs> -ish. shepherds pies. That's what we see Jesus do. That's what we need to do. It's not easy. It's not what our process-oriented instincts lead us to. But it is what Jesus has shown us to do. Throw away the circle. Speak the language of the people who already know about the coming of the kingdom. Even if they don't know it yet. Because that's what the coming of the kingdom 